past two years now, I've been at Chelsea at UAL, um, down in Chelsea campus, and I've been studying graphic design communications, and I've always wanted to do a video about what I do every single day for a week, and it's just never seemed to happen, like I start and then my camera runs out of battery or whatnot. So I decided this week is my last year, it's a really hectic week this week, it's 13th of November and I thought I'd document it. I just wanted to quickly show you my desk, which I work at every single day. I do my uni work here and my business work. Um, so this is it. Um, so I obviously have all my tools that I need, so my iPad, my computer, my phone, and my trackpad. And I could li not live without this screen. Um, so when I work, it's ridiculous that I have about four screens out. And then the more interesting things, I have this cool little light from Oliver Bones, and I love the bulb. And this is a photo of me and my friend Kendall at a party. Um, jewellery stand where, of course, I don't put jewellery. I put all my like paper swatches and tapes. And then I've got these art prints that I took over in Kew Garden. Um, these are also available on my store and this is a photo of me and Sarah which I love I've just done a morning of work um, for my uni and, pre and I like practice my presentation and everything because now I'm heading off to UAL as they have asked me to do a talk on what it's like owning a business and running it while still studying which is really exciting as it's my first ever talk so I better head out now to the underground as I'm not late but if I don't get going and stop procrastinating I'm going to be late which will be really embarrassing I hope I have enough bookmarks for everybody, but I have no idea how many people are going to attend, so fingers crossed. I just told 100 people I'm going to which is really, really nervous now. And then we've got Lily, who's going to fill the work. I'm in these talks all the time still because I'm third year, and what basically interests me is not really the story of the person, but what can I learn from them. So I put together a list which got me the most impact and maybe that I would recommend anybody to focus on and it's to have clear UX and UI on your website because relationship, not like, businesses is all about relationships between the consumer and you. So if you have a terrible website where they can't navigate, they can't use it, it looks terrible, the relationship is instantly broken. You want to look professional. like I. I think I, I look okay because like, I have people like emailing me being like, can I have internships with you? Like, where are your offices located? And I'm like, I'm just at home on myself in my bedroom, but you're welcome to come. Um, the next one is clear photography. This, like, when I was 16 and I'd take, taken my iPhone 4 was terrible. And then over the years it developed um, and stuff. But again, that's building trust with your customer because you're basically showing a exactly what the product is, like the colours and the lifestyle and things. Um, how I grew was word of mouth, so customers telling friends and family this is absolutely key and this can also be done through social. Um, collaborations of influencers. The top one was with a girl called Alien Creatures, I don't know if any of you, well she's not called it, she's called Danielle, but her account's Alien Creatures. And now I think she has 1.3 million followers, so that was a really good one to work with. And then the one down here, I don't know do you guys know Mark Ferris? He's Zoella's best friend. I don't know if you know Zoe. You probably do. But um, yeah, I got him luckily when he started first making friends with him. And then we did a collaboration, which I'll talk about in the next slide. And then PR online with relevant people. Now, it's not about sending a product to a blogger anymore because everybody's doing it. There's no impact. The consumers know that people are getting paid to do that now. It just doesn't work. You need to think of like, in a, um, new ways of like doing it um, better and just thinking ahead and thinking what other people aren't doing. 
Um, going to events and networking for me is really, really key. We're all in London, there's so many events. You've got like Pulse, Top Draw, all these markets. Just go around, talk to people. I mean, like I have, wasn't even displaying in some of these places and I've got sales and collaborations and um, stuff through that. Um, yeah, um, selling to events is really key. It's really nice to get instant direct feedback and like meet your customers. And make it a good experience because that makes it different. So how can you make it good basically? Um, when I started my first business was actually at the age of 11 and I went up to my uncle and I was like, can you give me some advice? And this has stuck with me for since now and it's know your strengths is important but what's more important is knowing your weaknesses because that's I feel like it's the area that will let you down if you know you're bad at photography go onto YouTube it's free like learn how to use a camera you can take nice photos now on your phone if you're bad at UX and UI design go to Big Cartel like they've got loads of templates there where you can look at it it's, it's just like you need to know your weaknesses to be able to be the best you can um, Another one I love from a maths teacher really is every bit of time you find, do something productive and creative. It makes big tasks really small. Um, and then to like end with, I wanted to end on tips really, because everybody loves tips, right? <laughs> um, the first one is really know your target audience. That's so key. At the end of the day, you are selling products to people and you need to know what they like. The second one really is to have a wide range of products in your portfolio. I appreciate that all you guys are artists and designers here and you want to make stuff that you love. What I mean by this is you have, like, let te let's take Chanel for an example. They've got their couture brand, which they have all the pieces that they really love designing and embroidering, you know, being creative. Then they've got their ready to wear collection, which are for people with a bit more money. And then they've got their perfume collection, which is for the everyday person. So you can see in the three product portfolios, everybody can buy something from all of them and actually their perfume is what funds the couture, well not really, but you, can you see how that could work with your business if you've got postcards that are like 90p and you're selling 100 of them, 100 of them a week, that's 100 pounds that you can fund to do what you love maybe, which is ceramics or you know, you, um, basically also, do things that you're not necessarily happy about, but which are commercial. Like the Mark Ferris collection, that is really not my type of style of work, but I knew that it'd be commercial, it would make me money. I could invest in camera gear, I could invest in like monitors and everything. Because um, you need to make a living at the end of the day. Um, make it human. With technology now, just like all experiences, like you know, it's like all these online experiences, there's no human connection anymore. So I think that's really key for the future of retail. Um, don't try and compete against big brands and know your market. I fell into that mistake. I was like, yeah, I can take on Topshop and Skinny Dip and all these. They have hundreds of people working for them and like masses of investment. You need to find what you're good at and like work within that area. Um, don't let anybody think you can't do it. I've had so many people from like when I was 10 be like, oh, you can't set up a business age 11, you can't do it 16, you know. But just ignore them, do it. Um, make mistakes but learn. That's like the ridiculously cliche one, isn't it, I suppose? But invest in important things, but don't overinvest. What I mean is um, money and time. So if you think, you look at something like Instagram, is it worth investing? three hours a week maybe, scheduling, taking photos, editing. I mean, are you reaching those, you just need to think, how will this impact on me and my business? Is it worth it? Um, get training in retail, that sounds really weird, but I like I worked in a restaurant and in Oliver Bonus, and both of them gave me a lot of confidence. It, made me realise I had to speak to consumers and like talk about products. So if I could do that then I could like talk about I don't the skills you learn there is so key and they also train you for free, so why not do it? <laughs> and you get paid, which then you can put into your business. Um, quality. Just 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 produce high quality stuff because there's so much stuff now in the mass markets which are just terrible quality and I feel like quality now will just make you stand out and be different. 
Um, don't be a perfectionist, it will only hold you back. I kind of feel that's an excuse when people are like, oh yeah, I have this art print, but I, I, I want to put it online and sell it, but I just don't think it's that good yet. It's just like, it looks good, just, just put it out. You need to have the confidence just to do it, kind of thing. Um, just out of curiosity, does anybody, is anybody thinking about setting up a business here? Or, like, been talking about it? Yeah? I'm kind of guessing that's why you're here. Um, but my last one is, don't think about and talk about it. Just set it up, because life is too short. Start bad, and then like develop, like, just keep developing. Like, I can't explain how bad my first website was. It's so embarrassing. Um, yeah, just do it, because I've had so many people talking to me, and I'm just like, Oh. But yeah, thank you so much. I hope you've learned something. Um, you can follow me on my social media to figure out. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, this is my first talk. So. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I've just finished giving my talk in um, UAL. I really hope that people learn something from it. And now I'm about to meet Gabriel and we're going to go to the graphic design exhibition. I have no idea where he is, so I think he's still on the underground somewhere. We walked around Soho for a bit and came across this restaurant called Ping Pong which did amazing dumplings and the interiors of the restaurant was absolutely fabulous. After we finished dinner we headed from Soho over to Regent Street to the Apple Store as I wanted to try out the new iPhone. I'm now at Babington. Yay! <laughs> Say hi! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for watching, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos. You can also head over to my website where I design phone cases and stationery with my illustration works on them. You can get 20% off all phone cases with the code YouTube, the link is in the description below. Please also follow my Instagram and Twitter to see all my current design works and see you next time, thanks!